Welcome back, fellow geeks, to another episode of This Week in 3D Printing. This week we discuss 3D Hubs' newest acquisition, a 3D printer that prints bricks, and the top-selling printers on Amazon for October. Stay tuned because this will be a very exciting episode. This Week in 3D Printing, 3D Print Service 3D Hubs acquired Printivate, a service that analyzes and repairs models before printing. Along with analyzing and repairing models, Printivate also allows its users to hollow and simplify grid and quality, or in other words, high and low resolution mesh counts to create the low poly or even high poly models. This is good news if you're a hub offering your print service on 3D hubs because this can help 3D hubs quickly identify if a model is printable and or needs to be repaired before the 3D service a hub accepts or declines the client's print job, which from a personal standpoint is a really big problem on the site. It is a big problem that I've experienced because you do not have everybody with print and modeling experience, especially in 3D printing. And if you're familiar with that, that is a really big step up from other types of 3D modeling. So that has been a big problem in the past. Now, this will be very interesting for hubs that offer repair services to model files as this kind of eliminates their need and uh, almost entirely their service. Now, this doesn't completely repair models if it is that badly drawn, which I have seen. Uh, this will be very interesting how 3D Hubs rolls this out and the community feedback moving forward, but only time will tell if the community accepts this. Though it does seem like a really good step forward for 3D hubs in the 3D printing service. Next, we talk about a company out of the Netherlands. The Netherlands really seem to be on fire right now with 3D printing. A company called Pixelstone. Pixelstone is a small 3D printer that prints small cube looking stones, pixels, and arranges them to create facades. Now, brick construction is one of the oldest styles of construction and recorded history and still requires many man hours to complete a job. So it will be very interesting as 3D printing technology evolves to see how we take care of this age old hassle. Now Pixel Stone for now seems to be a little small and a little slow moving to keep up with the fast paced construction schedule which is fast paced even though it looks very slow and seems to be moving at a snail's pace. Now to be truly effective I do believe this will have to speed up or create larger pixels or bricks to create a full facade. Now this is a really cool idea and what they've come up with so far is really quite amazing. Some really nice products that they have in different facades. Now it would be very interesting how this technology moves forward if Pixel Stone now moves to a bigger size model or bigger pixels with a larger machine to try to keep up or if this is kind of where their whole vision was going. Now only time will tell what they decide to do with this and if this is a fad or if this actually catches on and you start seeing this in 3D printing. Now one last tidbit as we wrap up episode 4 this week. Website named filaments.directory is doing a wonderful competition. And if you haven't heard of filaments.directory, I will leave a site to all their social media and their site. They give away filaments weekly and is a one-stop shop to find all of the filaments that you never knew existed in manufacturers far and near that you might not have ever found out about. Now, they're currently hosting a contest which ends Tuesday, November 8th. They're giving away two Wanhu i3 Pluses. Five people will get four grams of Enofil Pro 1. Eight people will get four spools of Colorfab Co Polyester. And 20 people will receive four spools of Extruder Co Polyester filaments. Now, all you have to do to enter this is register on their site, and boom, that's one entry. <clears throat> then, for every filament setting that you post on their website, you get an additional entry. Now, it's really wonderful because every entry you get gets you one step closer to a lot of awesome free filament and possibly a printer. Now to put in these settings it asks your basic information, your printer, your slicer, temperatures, did you use glue, painters tape, nothing, did you use heat, 
Now, these are really simple, straightforward questions, and it really helps people who, quite frankly, have never used that filament before. And I know I've definitely checked this out since they started doing this on some of the filaments that have come with the Maker Box to kind of get two sources on the recommended temp ranges. Now, it's a really easy way to win free filament and possibly a free printer. Now, that concludes this week in 3D printing. If you have enjoyed this, please feel free to like. If you have any comments, as always, feel free to comment below. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, as you've enjoyed the other ones, please feel free to subscribe. And if you have any comments moving forward on future topics or future requests, as always, feel free to comment below or send me an email at chrisbrown at 3dpgeek.com. Now, until next time, keep printing.